Hi there, Alan Matthews here. This is the video about the basic concepts of everything. This is the theory of life, the universe, and everything else right here as it pertains to classical guitar. These are my personal views on what goes into every single note, how we play, the basic fundamentals of everything that we bring to the table whenever we sit down to play a single note a bunch of notes, a chord, a song, a piece, a program, whatever it is that we're doing in our guitar life. Ideally, these are the basic concepts that inform that, that will be in this video right here. I hope that you get a lot out of them, I hope that you enjoy them, and I hope that they inform the other videos that you may be watching as well, and that you can use this as a fundamental to get to everything else that you're doing. I hope it's very helpful for you. So here we go, let's get started. All right, so to begin with, one basic fundamental is just alignment and how we use our bodies. If you'll notice, I'm not holding a guitar. It's because the fundamentals of playing the guitar don't really have anything to do with the guitar because what we do is we play our bodies. We just stick the guitar in the way and it happens to be that that's the instrument that we were doing. But these same fundamentals would, would apply, I'm guessing, to just about any other instrument that you would spend your time practicing. I know they do to piano, I know they do to cello and violin, I'm assuming they would to the tuba and the bassoon and the xylophone as well. So let's get into them. The first is alignment. And so with alignment, you want to think, how is my body at its strongest? How is it at its best mid-range so that it has the most options of where to, to move? Um, for instance, if I'm like this, there's only one place that my arm can go from the elbow and that's out. If I'm in the middle like this, well then I've got some options. I can go down this way, I can go up this way. Same with the shoulder. If I'm clamped to my side, there's only one way for my shoulder to go and that's out from my side in whatever direction it choose to go. If it's slightly out like this, well then all of a sudden now I've got some options, right? So this happens with the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, the big knuckle, the middle knuckle, the tip joint, everything with the guitar is basically with this exact same thing. Even the waist, not that the waist, but even the hips, the neck, everything you want to be in its most optimal spot so that it has the most options of where it can move. Now on the guitar, we lock down, we're in this kind of a little position like this right here, and we, we stay there, but still we want the options of moving around because within that, is the most strength and the most freedom in our joints and the least amount of uh, possibility of wear and tear unnecessarily just from being in the position. So this is one of the things, is the basic alignment. Now whenever we're actually getting ready to play, we normally think about maybe the wrists and the hands and everything like that. That's the main thing that we think about in guitar technique. We're not really thinking so much about my knees or my feet or what is my angle of my ankle and my toes, what are my toes doing? We don't really think about that stuff so much, but you could, if you wanted to, you could actually think about those things, at least for a moment, and say, well, am I actually putting myself in the most optimal position to do whatever it is that I'm wanting to do? And sitting position and all this type of thing, there's a lot of people who go back and forth on these. Should I use a footstool, should I not? What's the, you know, should I crane my head around and look at the neck or should I not? Or what's the, what, what to do and all that stuff. It's all secondary to this. This is at the root of, I want my body to be able to move as well as it possibly can in the way that it is designed to move, and that's it. So, to get a basic position, think about, think about arm wrestling. I know that you're on the arm wrestling circuit, as I am, arm wrestling every Friday night down at the local pub. Not, not really, but if you do this, if you go, I'm gonna arm wrestle you like this, then you put your hand like this, and that's where you're gonna sense that it's stronger. And that's exactly the position for playing classical guitar as well. You just look at this, but then you stick it down here whenever you're actually playing. If you do it with the other hand, well that's actually, you know, you stick your thumb out and that's how you would optimally play here. Because the wrist is extended this way, or it's hyper extended this way, hyper extended this way, we want the mid-range, and the mid-range is either flat to the arm or slightly um, to the palm side of the arm. And so depending on what we're doing, we'll do one or the other of those. It's somewhere in this mid-range. It's in the middle 
20% or so of the movement that we can do right in here. Whenever, we're, whenever the knuckles are higher than the wrist, well then, then we start getting into trouble. And I recommend against playing like this ever. Well, unless you're doing a pizzicato thing. There are special techniques that make us get out of a good position and we have to do them simply because we have to do them. But in general, 99% of the time, the big knuckles should be below the wrist like this or even with them, but definitely not with the wrist lower like this. The reason will become clear in a little bit. And so with the left hand, it's the exact same thing. This is not so good. Hyper extended like this, not so good. This is where these repetitive stress injuries come from that, uh, that a lot of people have, carpal tunnel, any kind of repetitive stress, losing circulation, numb hands, things like this, oftentimes, typically happen due to extreme angles of the, of the wrists, either like this, back and forth this way, or like this, back and forth this way. This is normally how these problems arise. And so we wanna avoid those, of course, why not? Why not just from a very fundamental spot say, okay, this is how I'm going to play, and everything that I do has to conform to that or it's not right. Whatever, whoever said, even if, you know, the great guitar god of ancient Greece comes down and says, you must play this way, still, it's, if it doesn't actually go into the basic way that the body moves, then just say, you know, maybe I'll find some other way to do it. And then you'll have to deal with his wrath, his or her wrath. But these are the prices we pay. So that is alignment. These are the fundamentals of alignment. Same thing in your chair sitting up straight, leaning like this in your chair, that's just kind of not a very good alignment. Think about being upright, sitting down, your weight can go through, because then you have the ultimate range of motion. If you want to lean this way, you can lean this way. If you want to lean this way, forward, back. So think about that in every single aspect of your playing. Am I in the most beneficial, neutral position to be in? That's the fundamentals of alignment. Next up, we're gonna talk about the fundamentals of movement in the hand. And this is really where the rubber meets the road pertaining to guitar. And so, what we're gonna to do to begin this is we're just going to, this is just a right hand thing that we're gonna be talking about here. Left hand we'll save for another day. But with the right hand, hold your hand out in front of you like you're gonna arm wrestle somebody perhaps. Um, and give yourself a few slaps into your palm like this. And notice, the tip joints are not curling in and making a fist like this. It's not this. It's letting the tip joints be passive and coming down and slapping into the palm like this. There's an exercise in an exercise video as well that does this as an, as an exercise. So do this a few times. This is the basic fundamentals of how we want to move. Now, when we're playing, the tip joint isn't always passive. But most people, whenever they start playing, they use way too much tip joint and so you end up with this clinchy thing and a lot of people will be coming to this video and these videos because they have been studying for a long time and have really bad right hand habits and have a lot of tension and it's very grippy and, and, and this type of thing and they want to make a change in that. And the way to do that, whenever we have a, a branch that you want to grow straight but it's growing over here, you don't just put it straight. You put it all the way over here, you tie it back for a little while, and then whenever you release it, lo and behold, it goes straight again. And that's the exact same way here. So think about the tip joints being completely passive whenever you're working on, your, on, on technique and fundamentals and things like that, learning arpeggio patterns, things like that. Keep the tip joints passive. When you're actually playing later on in actual pieces and everything, they won't be at 100% passive and loose. but they will be less engaged than some other knuckles. They'll be engaging less than other knuckles. So to do this, we just close the hand a few times, we just slap it, and then we reference this with all of our arpeggios, with your scales, both rest stroke, free stroke, everything that you do can go back and say, well, is it following this basic motion? Is this what my hand is doing? Is it closing? And that is the basis of everything. In all of these videos that um, that are in this series, you will find that this is at the root of everything. This, fun, this, is, my entire con, this is my entire world of guitar, is closing the hand like this, 
And then can we actually do it in such a way, in such an order, that we can put it on the guitar, put the strings in the way of it, and beautiful music comes out of it. And it's effortless and it's fast. And it's consistent and reliable. That's what we're looking for. And hopefully that's what you'll get out of this. So do this. When, whenever you're playing the thumb, it also moves from the back knuckle, back here. It's not this, it's not this little tip jointy thing. The tip joints on the right hand should be used little, just a little, not so much, mainly for stability whenever they are. But as far as doing this type of thing, there's not a lot of call for this motion on the guitar. If you're playing with good technique, there's not a lot of call for it. It's probably the reason that you're coming to this video is because you've been doing this and you don't like the sound or you can't go fast or you've reached your ceiling on how beautiful or how fast or how easily that it is that you're playing and you want a change. So this is it. I know it's simple, but it's, but it's the goods. So do this. Whenever you're playing different fingers, then you'd basically be doing the exact same thing one finger at a time. Whenever we do our Peggio patterns and things like that, then the question is, there's some going out, there's some going in. Whenever we're doing scales, it's going back and forth with the, with the INM alternation. Whenever we're doing chords and doing chunk chords, balancing chords, everything else, it's the same exact thing right here so that we're just closing the hand every single time. Of course, on the guitar, it's down here. So those two things are the fundamentals of movement. Alignment and closing the hand. Now, I am going to expand a little bit on another couple of fundamentals just to keep in mind, and that is ease of motion. We want everything that we do to be easy. Now, if it's not easy, it doesn't mean that everything we, ask to be, we do is simple because we do very complex things, but it should be easy in our body. So if I said, oh, hand me that glass of water, that's easy. You're going to reach over, you're going to grab that glass of water, and you're going to hand it to me. Now there is strength involved, there's tension involved. You have to hold the glass of water, and so there is muscle engaged, right? You're using your arm, you're using your hand. Hand me the glass of water, but it's appropriate to what's happening, and it's easy, you know? Now if I said, hand me that, that glass of, um, of dynamite, or a plutonium or something like that, you may be a little bit more tense and giving it to me and you may be more careful and everything, but you wouldn't have to be. You could just do it just like a glass of water. And so it's a mental game. And that's where we get into with the guitar is this mental game of this is hard, what I'm doing. And so therefore I need to put a lot of effort into it. And it's not necessarily the case. In fact, it would be easier if you allowed it to be easier. So if you have a, you know, some radioactive glass of plutonium sitting there, of course you don't want to break it and spill it all over your house. Um, you know, if you're a scientist, don't, uh, don't nitpick about my analogy here, my metaphor, but you could just pick it up just like a glass of water and hand it to me. You wouldn't spill the water because you'd be easy about it. You just do it. And so it's the exact same way with the guitar. Yes, it's difficult what we're doing. Yes, you want there to be a particular outcome. You want to play the right note at the right time, at the right volume, in the right tone. And yes, we have all those considerations. However, you could still do it just easily. Boom. And it's really a mindset. Now, a lot of this happens in the face. There, the, eyes, the eyes fascinate me. The eyes have it. If you soften your eyes and you soften your tongue, if you soften your face, a lot of things happen with your mind. Now, a lot of times in performance, which is one of the main anxieties and one of the main problems people have is, is performing in front of other people. They just go to pieces. One of the big things is the mental chatter that goes on and, and the, all of the mental pollution we talk to ourselves, basically. If we soften our eyes, meaning kind of be more aware of the periphery a little bit, if we soften our face, release the muscles, things like that, we end up thinking less in words we, we end up thinking fewer words and talking to ourselves less. If we defocus the eyes just a smidge, then we talk to ourselves less and we take in more of what's going on. We can practice that in our practice because this is another fundamental of and basic concept is how we practice is how we play. And so in practice, if we can soften our eyes, in practice, if we can have good alignment, if we can close our hands well, 
and whenever we're playing and pay attention to these things, we can soften our attention and make it more focused, but relax, keep ease in everything we're doing. Well, then what happens is whenever we go to actually play for people, that's our habit and we go on to our autopilot and that's what we bring to the table, which is great. If we're scattered and we're tense in our practice, we're thinking about the grocery list and what he said, she said, they said, we said, then that's what we're getting into the habit of. That's just as much a part of our muscle memory as PIM and then do this and this is this scale shape and this is that. It's every bit as much of our memory and muscle memory in our playing is all that other stuff. And so what we want to do then is train ourselves in practice, use the quality of our focus, use our bodies in practice so that we are preparing ourselves for the best possible outcome. That's both physically, that's mentally, that's with everything that we're doing so that we can learn best, fastest, easiest possible way with the most retention so that we can get better faster, we can enjoy music more, we can play more beautiful music, we have more music that we can play, all of these things we want. And the way to do that is through the body because you want to know a tip. There's really no difference between the body and the mind. If the body is all tense, the mind will be tense. If the mind is completely flaccid and like a limp wash rag, then the body will also not be on its edge and really sharp as well. It'll be sluggish. It'll be slow and it'll be sloppy. So they're really the same thing. So what we can affect, the mind is very difficult to affect, but the body is very easy. We just do it. If you want to sit up straighter, you can sit up straighter. There you go. If you want to release the tension around your eyes, you can release the tension around your eyes. And so you can just do it. So bring this attention and bring all this into your practice and into your, into everything that you do. And especially, you know, you can do this off the guitar as well. If you're sitting at work, you can soften your eyes. It's okay. You know, you won't get paid any less if you soften your eyes a little bit. If you're walking down the street, you can release and have a little bit more ease in your body. You can have good alignment. You know, if you're sitting, if you're sitting at and eating dinner, you know, you can, you can use your body well to where you, you have the, the most available options to you. Even though you probably won't exercise them, you just sit there and eat. But still, you could have those options available. So there you go. There are some fundamentals and basics of my whole philosophy of everything in the world and how to live and how to play and how to approach your music and your practice and everything else you're doing. I hope that it's informative a little bit to you. I hope that you can look at it analytically and say, is this valid or is this just a whole lore, a whole, just a whole truckload of horse pucky, whatever. You could look at it and say that and say, okay, weigh it. If you want to use it, use it. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. But I find it very valuable and very useful. Take care. See you next time.